Hello everyone, my name is Pejman and welcome back to the course of uh, deep learning with the TensorPro and CROSS. As you remember on the uh, last uh, videos, we talked about uh, a, mo a model uh, for the deep learning. Uh, we started from a, a simple model, such as softmax uh, uh, model, that we have just one layer of softmax. And then we increased the capacity of the network and we, we improved the, our performance on the classification. And at the end, we saw that, okay, we have still some uh, overfitting. And we back to this question that uh, what we can do to solve this problem. So is our network uh, uh, is, uh, bad, bad design? Or do, uh, do we use the too many of neurons? Or, or data are not enough. So based on this question, we can say, okay, as we are using the MNIST database, and it's around uh, a good database, I can say, from the, from the, the size point of view. Uh, so we don't have this problem. So it can be too many neurons, or it can be bad network. So if we think that, okay, at the fully connected uh, model, fully connected layers model, we stretch or we, uh, we make it uh, our image flat. So it means that we lose all information on our image. So when we make it flat, we don't see any blobs or we don't see any edge on, on the, our image. So it's just an array. So if we wanted to get benefit of such a, these features on our image, we cannot use uh, fully connected models. So this is the point that we can think that, okay, this is the bad network for uh, classification of, of images. So maybe if you are working with, uh, with signals, it can be a good model that you have uh, one array of signal. But when you are working on the image, so it's a little uh, different. So for this, we can offer convolutional neural network. We saw uh, a, video, uh, a picture of uh, the whole convolutional neural ne uh, network. But here we, we dis describe uh, how it's, it's work. So in the convolution layer, we work on the, on the spatial domain, or the spatial structure, I can say. So assume that. We have an image like uh, this, three, 32 by 32 by 3, so, and the, the depth is 3. It means that it's, uh, for example, uh, a RGB image, that we have the three channels of uh, R, G, and B, red, green, and uh, blue. So, and then we wanted to do uh, convolution. So we should use a filter. Uh, and then uh, we should uh, apply this filter on image. So for, for ones that uh, uh, are less familiar with the convolution and uh, how the convolution works, I can say that we apply a filter. So the filter, it can be at, at any size, 5 by 5, 3 by 3, uh, or uh, I can say 7 by 7. Uh, it can be like this, but uh, usually I rec don't recommend you to use a bigger size of filter as the cost of uh, our uh, algorithms will, uh, will go high because we, we, we have to do convolution. So we applied it on an image. So if, we, if I back, for example, we have the image of 32 by 32 by the tree, the RGB. And we have the filter size of the 5 by 5 by 3. So the same uh, depth size. So it means that if you are working on the gray scale image, you don't need to have a filter size of for example, 5 by 5 by 3, you just need to have a, a, a filter size of 5 by 5 by 1 because you are on the gray scale and you have just one, one channel. So we apply this filter on the on an image and we do the convolution. We usually start it from uh, top left and we'll go s slide it over, over the image to, to do the convolution. So I just briefly dis dis uh, describe it. If you want to uh, know more in more details how the convolution uh, convolution will uh, will do, you can have can search it on, on Google and you will see uh, lots of sources to to describe this. So when we do this, we we can generate uh, one activation map. So 
when we applied it once uh, on, on a specific location on image, we generate one value from that, and then we shift it by one, uh, one pixel, and then the second value, third value, fourth value, and so on till end of or, or image. So here, after applying this filter on, uh, on image, you can see we have uh, such a uh, convolvement, or we can call it activation map, uh, after, after convolution. So if we do this for the second time with, with, the, with, the, with another, another filter, we can generate one more uh, activation map or the, the convolution, uh, convolution image. So convolve image. So if we do this several times, for each time we generate one, uh, one activation map. So for example, here, as you can see, we have an image 32 by 32. We use six filters uh, for to generate the six uh, acti activation maps or con uh, convolved image that you can see here. So and then we use it as an input of the of the next layer. So here you can see. Uh, okay, we, and then at the end we can stack all these uh, six uh, images to have uh, an image size of, it can be 28 by 28 by 6 or it can be at the same size of the input image, 32 by 32 size. And then uh, for the next layer, this will be the input. So we know that if we wanted to use uh, the new filter for apply on the on the, the blue uh, images, or the blue, this is this, uh, activation, we call it activation maps. The blue activation maps, we need a filter size of, uh, for example, five by five by six. So to, and we can do several times uh, of this, uh, this convolution. For example, here we have, uh, we showed that it's, uh, we did it uh, 10 times, okay? So six times at the, the first convolutional uh, conv layer, and the, the second time, uh, 10 times for the second, and we can do this uh, several times uh, and, uh, and go on and so on. So, and now uh, that we, we understand how the convolutional layers work, we wanted to, to uh, write a uh, script for, to, to implement a model of uh, convolutional layers. So here you can see we have an image of uh, 28 by 28 by 1. So depth is, is one. And then we define a three uh, conv layer or convolutional layer. The first layer, second, and the third that uh, we use. And usually in the convolutional layers, after each layer, we do the uh, max pooling. The, the max pooling is, uh, is just uh, subsampling of image to usually uh, to uh, two times uh, smaller than the, the previous one. For example, when we have 28 by 28, the, the second uh, after applying the max pooling, uh, it will be 14 by 14, and again after that it will be 7 by 7. We do this till the time that we have uh, a small uh, size of the of image. So, for example, here after two layers, we we don't need to to continue, and then at at this level that we have features just on, on image, so it's not, uh, it's not like, uh, like, for example, a human on that image. It's full of features, any features, blobs, edge, or any type of features are in this. And then at this point, we can stretch it or, or make it flat and feed it to the, to the fully connected layers. So by this, uh, we, we go further and do the classification like our, our previous example. So if I wanted to, to show you how we can uh, write a code for that, OK? So similar to the, the previous examples, uh, we, we load the database here, MNIST database. And then uh, we import uh, models. So uh, if you remember, we, we import the sequential, and then we import the dense uh, function. function. So here, function and dense and activation, of course. And now that we wanted to use also uh, convolutional layers, so we have to add conv2D because we, we are working on the 2D images. So 2D signals, I can say that it's, it's image. So we need the max pooling 
to subsample the, or downsample the, the, the image. And then we use the flatten to make the image uh, flat. So same as the before dropout, we will use the dropout, and this is for one uh, hot uh, encoding, converting. So we, we use the let me to, to run uh, one by one, and we go further. So uh, like the, the previous one, we, uh, we use the tensor board to see the, the curves of uh, laws and accuracy. Do we change the name to CNN softmax model? And then uh, the same, uh, uh, we, we use the, the reshape function, but not for, for make the images flat. As you see, we make uh, images as the size of uh, 28 by 28 by 1. So uh, 28 pixel, 28 pixel, and the depth that is equal to 1. And also we do it for the for the testing, and then we similar to the previous one we do the normalization to to make it between zero and one, and then uh, convert it to the one hot encoding, the same as as before. These these are not uh, new new uh, blocks. So here in our model, instead of using dense to make uh, fully connected layers, we use conv 2D. Okay, and uh, what uh, what we will write here when we use the function of conv 2D convolutional in 2D, we should write the number of uh, times that we wanted to apply this filter on image. So as you remember, we said that we slide one filter on uh, on an image, so it generates an activation map, and if we do this for the second time it generates a, a new activation map, so uh, we have two. So it is that the time that we wanted to apply this. So we can say that four. So after uh, first uh, fully connected layer, we have uh, activation map of uh, 28 by 28 by four. The depth is four because we did it four times. So activation, uh, we use the ReLU as before, and the input shape of is uh, 28 by 20. We keep the, the shape of image. So, and then we do the max pooling. Usually, max pooling uh, is uh, used by, by the factor of two. So we do the down sampling by the fa factor of two. It's the uh, uh, common uh, way. And as, as it is the max pooling, it, in a uh, box of uh, four pixels, it will take uh, the, the maximum value of them and will uh, replace it with the, the, on, on the new, new pixel. So, uh, we do this, uh, we use the, the second convolutional layer, and we, uh, we use eight filters here, the same size of uh, filter, and the activation map. Again, for the max pooling, we do the max pooling of uh, two, and for the, for the last one, uh, we use uh, 12 uh, filters, so by the same size and the same uh, activation map. As you remember, in, uh, I said that for the fully connected layers, we make a model like this from the, the, the a layer with a high number of uh, neurons and then a little less less and less so we can we can we, we can come like this but for the convolutional layers we should go like this so in the opposite direction we use uh, a small number of filter at the beginning that uh, or that is our, uh, will be on our image. So as we go further, our feature will be more complex, so we need more filter to extract better features for our model. So at the beginning, we use less number of uh, filters. Then we go, it will be uh, a little more, and then we'll, uh, we'll, uh, it can be uh, as much as uh, we want, but a little uh, more than the, the previous layer. So. And then we, we make uh, the image flat and feed it to the, to the fully connected layers. We can consider 200 uh, uh, neurons here with the activation and the dropout drop of 0 0.2. And at the end, the last uh, layer will be the same 10, uh, 10 neurons of the, or that is the old classes. So if we run it, we made our, our model and then we uh, compile the model and at the end, uh, similar to the previous one, we, we fit it. 
let me to change it to to five, and then we'll uh, we'll run it. So it take more times uh, compared with the with the previous one, uh, but at the end it will uh, generate a better performance uh, uh, for us. So if we go to the tensor board to visually see the see the results, so we can. Uh, See here that uh, it reached the, the accuracy of the of the validation. It reached almost to the 98.9. Yeah, you can see here at the, at the black one that you can see 90, uh, 98.9 or 0 0.989. So. It's, it's a good improvement compared with the previous one that was around uh, 97.9 or 98 maxim maximum. So we had an improvement here. And for the, for the loss function also, we see that it came to the, to the range of, for example, 0 0.04 or 0 0.05, uh, something like this. And we, we did it. So we reduce the the overfitting we reduce the, we increase the accuracy and it is the, the, the uh, it is the, the purpose that that we have so the best accuracy the minimum loss so if we wanted to compare all um, or mod all models that we we developed or we implemented uh, together we can see here this is the fully connected uh, layer with the softmax. This is the fully connected layer with the with the uh, ReLU. This is the fully connected layer uh, with ReLU and the dropout. This is the the CNN model, and this is the the, the softmax, the the simplest the simplest model. So come on, okay. It it takes uh, time to to load them, but even here, it's, it's not loaded uh, fully yet, but even here you can see that the loss function of the CNN model is much, much less than other models that we, we implemented before. And if we go for the, for the accuracy, I don't know why it's like this. Let me, let me to uh, open it again. So here, if we write, let me to close the close the, the terminal of that. Let me to run it again. CMD tensor board uh, log DIR equal to logs alt slash. Okay. If it, uh, let's to copy, okay, address. Okay, that should be, okay, it works. Thanks. <laughs> so if we, if we have a look at this, you can see for the CNN model, we have the, as I said, that we have the minimum le uh, loss and the best accuracy here. Also, you can, you can see here the accuracy of all of your model, and you can see that CNN is the, the best one uh, here, 98, 90, 98 percent, 92. So these models uh, are, I can say, that the simplest model that we can use for the, for the classification. Uh, so you should customize uh, this, uh, this model based on your purpose and your data. So if you have a data in, uh, in more, uh, it's a bigger size, for example, instead of 28 by, or 32 by 32 or 28 by 28, if you have an image of 256, 256, you should increase the number of layers. And it's based on the complexity of your image. You should increase the number of filters in each layer for the, for the uh, convolutional layer uh, model or a structure. So you can modify this or customize this pen based on your, your purpose and your data. So it's uh, enough for, for this, uh, this topic. 
and uh, for the next video I will show you how you can use your data or how you can call your data because here we use uh, an available uh, library that load the, our data uh, for us, the MNIST, but we should uh, read our data and feed our data, our own data to, to the network. In the next video, I will show you how we can do this. Thank you for your watching. See you on next video.